Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is my end of year vlog for 2022. My last vlog was in September, so there's a lot to catch up on. So my main focus today is going to be sharing all of the things that I've been making in 2022. Let's dive right in. All right, let's start with the garments that I made. Um, over the years, I've been sewing a little less every year, and so it was actually kind of surprising. I feel like my list is not very long for this year. So this is one of the first garments I made, and it was made in May or like April, May for the Los Angeles Frocktails event. And this is a hack of the Jessica dress. I have a video about the making of the dress. Um, and I really love all the details I put into it. It's so nice and summery. It was definitely a successful make. Next is another maxi dress. And this is the Peppermint Magazine A-Line Wide Strap Dress. And I do have a blog post about this. Uh, I ran into a lot of fitting issues. It was just more fiddly than I thought it was going to be. Um, so I've worn it a few times, but I haven't worn it a lot. Um, there's, I feel like there's a thing about if the process of making something isn't that great, then I feel like I don't like the garment as much. Um, but hopefully next summer I will wear it more and kind of get over that feeling of frustration because it is in this really lovely linen. I think it looks nice. Um, yeah, so this one's okay. I think it's pretty, um, Links to all my blog posts will be down in the show notes, of course. So next I have this Rowena jumpsuit, and this is a pattern by Victory Patterns that came out this year. And it's a wrap front, wrap back with an elasticized waist, and the waist is done with elastic thread, um, full-length pants. I absolutely love this jumpsuit. I have a blog post about it, and I'm actually in the process of making a second one. My second jumpsuit is going to be out of this green striped fabric. Um, hopefully it's not too much. Um, I think, I think it'll be fabulous. I think it'll be good. <laughs> All right. I have another dress that I made and this is the Mica Caftan by Seamwork Magazine. And I used a black double gauze from Joann's. I really like it. I wore it a few times. Um, I made it right before my trip to Mexico in October, and it was perfect for that trip. I've not blogged about it, but I do really like it. And hopefully I can squeeze in like one more blog post before the end of the year and talk a little bit about this. It was a really quick and easy sew. So very satisfying, really good for sewing right before a trip. Also for that trip, I made a swimsuit and this is the Maggie Bikini Swimsuit by Seamwork Magazine. And I made this before in a teal color, um, but I made a little matching set out of this animal print. I think that's upside down. Um, anyway, really cute, really like it. I like the high waist um, and the bust is really supportive. I'll put a link to my blog post about the first time I made it down in the show notes. Another unblogged project are these free range slacks and I really like these. They are in a medium weight linen. The pattern is by Soho 7 and I love her patterns. I'm a big fan. So these slacks not blogged. Hopefully I'll get around to it sometime, um, but really great pattern, very comfy. And another unblogged project. This is the Lenny turtleneck and I made this again right before a trip. I'm um, right at the end of November. I made this as a layering piece and I've made this turtleneck a few times before. And the first time I made it, I made it with a ribbed fabric and I felt like it was too big. So I sized down and made a size small and I feel like it's a little too tight. So I think the problem was not the pattern but actually the fabric and that the fabric I used that first time stretched out. Um, so I think I might try to like give this to someone who's a little smaller than me and um, make another one in a bigger size. So nice layering piece, um, kind of classic. I have not even finished the hem or the sleeves, but, but it was quick to sew. Again, a really good like pre-vacation <laughs> sewing project. 
So those are my finished projects. I also have some in progress projects and one of them, I think I mentioned it before, I'm making a shirt for my boyfriend. I'm This is a wool from the Pendleton Woolen Store that we got this summer and I've been muslining a pattern. He really wants um, kind of a vintage style, like more oversized. So I'm on my like third muslin right now. Um, and I'm definitely not gonna have it done in time for Christmas, but I'm gonna do my best, uh, maybe by Valentine's Day, or yeah, hopefully by New Year's. Hopefully it'll be done by New Year's. I really wanna get the fit right because it's special fabric, you know, I can't reorder it, it was on closeout. So I've settled on using the Wardrobe By Me overshirt pattern, and I'm going up a few sizes. So hopefully it works out and I can share more of that in the new year. I'm also planning to do a plaid shirt for myself using the seamwork pattern bud, which is like a shacket style. So I've been making a muslin for that as well. Plus I have two more projects cut out, actually three. I have some underwear cut out that I need to sew. I've been meaning to like sew new underwear all year and I've been very slow at it. Um, and then I have a Ames blouse, again, a seamwork pattern out of this fabric, which is a little bit of a crinkly Swiss dot rayon in this um, olive green color. I have some time off from work and I'm hoping to get a bunch of sewing done. My main machine is in the shop right now getting serviced. I had an accident with a needle and it was, and I think it damaged the bobbin case. So my tension was off and it was time for a service anyway. So I'm like waiting to see. <laughs> I'm hoping they call me today that it's going to be done. But those are projects that are in the works. And of course, I was also sewing a lot of samples for patterns. I only released one pattern this year, and that is the Christmas stocking pattern in four sizes. This is an expansion of a free pattern that I did last year for a medium sized stocking, and I expanded it into large, medium, small, and mini. So I sewed tons of these. I now have stockings all over my house, um, but they are very cute. <laughs> And I even did a tutorial for making a quilted stocking with this star patchwork block where I took off the cuff and you just really feature the star patchwork. I love this design. I think it's super cute. And related to that, I made a pair of slippers with the star patchwork. Um, this is my quilted slippers pattern, which like ever since I released it, it's been my most popular pattern. I never would have expected that. Um, but I think these are just so cute. Um, there's a super fuzzy lining, extra layers of batting. I sewed these and did the tutorial for these as part of an email sew along that I did for the pattern in November. Uh, thank you to everyone who signed up. I was, again, like really amazed how many people signed up. I worked really hard on the sew along to build a ton of content and make it really valuable. So most of that content is now on the blog. So if you go to my website, and you hit the sew along tab. Then you go down to quilted slippers sew along. You can find all those posts. If you want the posts in the email format, you can also sign up for the emails at any time. And it's a series of five emails that will come to your inbox in about a week's period of time. So lots of great content. There are these cute slippers. There's a video for sewing the skimmer style now. And I also sewed a pair of the booty style with leather soles. And sewing these slippers with leather soles is a request that I've been getting for a long time. And I finally bit the bullet, tried it out. It worked. I was so pleased that it worked because I was really nervous about sewing leather, um, but just with a leather needle, it wasn't that bad. And again, on the blog, I have a ton of tips and a video about sewing these with leather. I was also working on developing a sports bra pattern or kind of a, a lounge bra. Um, and I got pretty far with it, but I think I need to make some design changes. So I also sewed a bunch of samples, um, but have not gotten close to the testing or publishing part of that pattern yet. Hopefully for next year, I will get more patterns out. I actually just heard about a new 3D software called Clo 3 d Emily from In The Fold sent a, an email newsletter about it, and she has a blog post about it. 
And this software will take your pattern files and make it into a 3D image on a 3D person. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but it will basically give you an image of what your pattern will look like on a body. And that is just mind blowing to me because at this point I have to draft the pattern, print it out, cut out fabric, sew it up, try it on, see what it looks like. But this would be so much faster. It would cut out so many steps where I can actually see what it would look like on a body or at least kind of see what it would look like and cut down on a lot of that repetition of sewing and tweaking and sewing and tweaking, which just takes so much time. Like, honestly, it takes me so much time that sometimes I think it's not really worth it to do patterns. So I'm really excited to try out this software in the new year and hopefully it'll help me just, um, hopefully it'll help me in the development process just to get to things faster. And the software you can upload your, or you can upload your illustrator files and it also exports illustrator files for the pattern. It looks really cool and I'm really excited to check it out. So a big thanks to Emily from In The Folds for sharing about it. I will link her blog post down below. Now we're gonna talk about quilts that I made in 2022. This one, I think I started in December and then I had it long arm quilted this year. And this is the Star Pop quilt by Quilty Love. And I used like all scrap fabric um, except for the backing. So I had just collected all these different colored gingham fabrics over the years and I thought it would look really cute in this design. So this was one of my projects, pretty fun. Um, always nice to have another quilt. And then <laughs> this is a queen size quilt that I have been making for a few years and finally finished. And I got this long arm quilted as well. And this is the freewheeling single girl quilt by Denise Schmidt. So it's inspired by the classic double wedding ring quilt, but it is like each block is one big ring. So um, kind of more modern, more free form, more organic of a shape. I also made another improvisational quilt and this one is mostly blues, but with pops of red and I experimented with some applique on this one. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have a blog post about this. Last but not least, I have two new quilt tops that I made and these, <laughs> these are made with vintage handkerchiefs and just each block has one handkerchief that I top stitched down. Um, there are two of them because I had like one batch of bigger handkerchiefs and one batch of smaller ones. And these handkerchiefs were my grandma's or her sister's and um, there are so many of them. I just thought they would be really pretty in quilts. So I think I might add some borders to, to these blocks. And then of course I need to get them quilted too. So I've also done a little bit of knitting and this is a color work sock. I need to make the second one. This is from the midwinter sock set pattern by Summerly Designs. Um, I think her designs are really great, really fun and colorful. So another knitting project that I've been working on, um, I kind of stalled out because I forgot it at my parents' house for a while, but this is the Cumulus sweater and this pattern is by Petite Knit. Um, it's a raglan sweater. I am using stash yarn. I hopefully will have enough. I think I'm going to have to combine Mostly it's gonna be from this, but I think I'll need to combine a little bit of other um, yarn kind of on the hem. So this is an ongoing project. I haven't worked on it in a few months, but uh, I did make quite a lot on it this year. I think that was everything I made this year. Um, it's been a pretty busy year. As I mentioned, I didn't get as much sewing stuff done really during the first half of the year. I was going, I was dealing with a bunch of kind of migraine related issues and then my kitty died. And so it was a pretty rough first half of the year between my health issues and the cat. So I've been slowly coming back. I'm on a new preventative treatment system. So doing a lot better. 
Um, and, which is great because I'm able to do, get more done and I feel better all around physically and mentally. So that's really great. Um, I also did a bunch of trips this year, you know, now that the pandemic is kind of starting to get a little bit better. Um, we've been just traveling and going to visit friends and family. So a lot of trips around the West Coast. We did a trip out to D.C., I think the biggest trip of the year was to Mexico. I won a trip via my local NPR station, KBCC, to go to Rancho La Puerta in Tecate, Mexico for a week. And it was beautiful and relaxing. That's where I took my caftan and my swimsuit. It was just, yeah, really nice, really beautiful. The weather was perfect. Um, Maybe my favorite part was that they cooked like really healthy, fresh meals, three meals a day. Yeah, they were really great about making gluten-free food. So I just loved not having to worry about cooking and not have to worry about getting food that was healthy and gluten-free. So that was, that was maybe, my, maybe my favorite part was just getting like, yeah, healthy gluten-free meals for three meals a day for a week it was awesome. <laughs> Another thing I worked on this year is reading, and I had a goal to read 36 books this year. I use Goodreads, so I have my goal on there, and I can track all the books I've been reading. And I have read 39 books, and that is including five audiobooks, because I think that does count. <laughs> I also count like books about like cookbooks and sewing books if I really thoroughly read them. If I just skim it, I don't count. But if I really thoroughly read it, then I do count those. Those are kind of my personal rules. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy I've achieved that goal. I currently have two books that I'm in the process of reading. So if I get those done, I'll have 41. Uh, my favorite books of the year, I read three books by Emily St. John Mandel, and I thought they were all really interesting, really unique, um, and really fun to read. So those were The Glass Hotel, Station Eleven, I also watched that TV show, which was really good, and Sea of Tranquility. So I recommend those. They're a little bit sci-fi, um, and the characters do go through the different books. Like You don't have to read all of them. They're not really sequential, but you, it is fun to see the characters in these different, um, in these different stories and these different books. And then my other favorite book of the year was The Secret History by Donna Tart. It's pretty long and it felt like it took a while to kind of get going, but once I did, I was really into it. So it's kind of a murder mystery, but on a college campus. So like, very, like, I read a lot of murder mysteries, and this was pretty different, a little more literary than a lot of murder mysteries. We're almost to the new year. I I don't know. I'm kind of reluctant to set big goals because I feel like things are so unpredictable. Um, but I've really been working on trying to get more organized because um, I feel like there's so much that I want to do, and I have a hard time accomplishing it all. So I've really just been kind of thinking about my processes, thinking about what I want to do and thinking of how I can set things up for myself to accomplish them. And so I am generally pretty organized, but also maybe just like a tad chaotic. <laughs> I will get swept up in ideas and just go with them and kind of forget about my previous goals. So... I don't know. I'm I'm just trying to work on it. I really hope that I can make more patterns. I have ideas for courses that I want to do, but I also do freelance work outside of the sewing. So that's going to take first priority because it makes me the most money. Um, also, you know, I have not made as much money in the pattern business the last two years. 2020 was my best year ever. And I think kind of think that a lot of sewing companies made a lot more money in 2020 because a lot more people were sewing. And, you know, just being at home, the pandemic really boosted sewing. And then it's just been kind of trickling back down. With that, I've also been doing more freelance and not working on the business as much as I was in 2020. So, uh, you know, and I only released one pattern this year. So I would like to see the business grow. I would like to do more videos. Um, I'd like to release more patterns in the new year. So I'm just kind of taking it slow with the planning, thinking how I can 
trying to like set up good systems and good habits so that I can do more stuff and like actually get things done and not just think of all the ideas and not actually do them. So if you have any tips for people who have like too many ideas and not enough time, I would love to hear them because I definitely have hundreds of ideas of things that I want to do. And it's always so hard to kind of like focus and get it from beginning to end. Um, one of the things that I think may help is this software program because it can get really tedious to do the sampling routine and like so repetitive of testing and sampling that sometimes I just give up. I think I could just get through that process faster and more efficiently, saving myself time and supplies. So I'll let you know how it goes. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's a, a miracle to my, um, my pattern design process. Well, I think that's it. I hope that you all have a very happy holiday season and a fantastic new year. Thank you so much for following along with me on my journey. I will have links to everything down below in the show notes. So please take care and sending you lots of love and happy sewing. 